Extreme cold and frost usually control what we can and can't grow. But in this video, I'm gonna show you a simple project so you can protect your plants and grow food throughout winter. Although we can extend the seasons and increase our food production with the use of glass houses and poly tunnels, they can be expensive to purchase and take up a lot of room in the garden. So with the cooler months approaching, I thought it's a great time to introduce you all to cold frames, a cheaper, easier and smaller option to extend the growing season that will also help you raise seedlings and harden off tender plants without the expense or large space required. Cold frames are the perfect way to start off your spring crops like tomatoes, beans and leafy greens up to a whole month earlier and even stretch out your summer crops like chilies, basil and strawberries well into autumn, meaning you get a whole lot more produce and bang for your buck. The idea of a cold frame is to absorb and hold on to light and heat to create a microclimate that protects but also tricks the plant into thinking they're in a different climate or season. Commercial growers have been doing this for years on a huge scale so we can enjoy all kinds of fruit and vegetables year round. The good news is cold frames are really easy to make. The walls can be made out of anything like stone, bricks or timber, and the lid can be made out of anything that lets the light and the heat in but won't let it out, like glass, perspex or plastic sheeting. Today, I'm gonna to make a really simple cold frame out of some timber and an old window frame I picked up at a local tip. Old windows, doors and shower screens are perfect because they've got this nice solid frame around them and you can pick them up pretty cheap too. First, measure your lid. You'll need to start by measuring the long sides, then subtract the thickness of your chosen timber off the ends of each short side to allow the lid to sit flush with the edges. Now measure and cut your timber to size for the frame. I've chosen to buy treated pine timber for longevity and ease of use, but any timber you have will be fine. How many bits of timber you cut will depend on the height you're after. We're doing ours at around 400 millimeters, which will be plenty of room to raise young seedlings and smaller plants. Once you've decided on the height, cut one more length for the back of the frame, then measure a new side piece from the rear timber to the front of the frame and cut to size. Then cut the length of the side diagonally across the middle to create two wedges. Put one on each side. This will allow the lid to sit at a slight angle so you can face it toward the sun to absorb more light and prevent any water from sitting on the top. Now we need to measure and cut four additional pieces of timber to place in each corner of the frame, ensuring they sit 20 millimeters below the top to allow for the drop in the wedge sides. These will be used to secure the sides of the frame together with screws. Now it's time to bring it all to life. I recommend building your cold frame wherever you intend to use it, as they can get a little awkward and heavy to move around once assembled. I recommend using galvanized or stainless steel screws for building your cold frame, as these types of screws won't rust away. Before screwing together, ensure all the sides are flush. Now for the fun part. When screwing in the wedges, do the backs as normal, but because the fronts are so skinny, you'll need to pre-drill a hole about a third of the way up on top to prevent splitting. Place the lid on top of your frame, then fasten two strong hinges to the back of the lid and frame at about a quarter in from each end. Now screw on a handle of your choice to the middle of the lid. This will make it easier for you to lift and adjust. Now it's time to make an internal stay to help keep our cold frame open. This is useful for putting plants in, taking plants out, airing, watering, and all around ease of use. This part is super easy. Just grab a bit of smaller timber or dower. I'm using a bit of leftover 25mm by 25mm. Then measure to the height you need to have the lid open enough for use and cut to size. Now screw it to the inside wall at one end. Because we're drilling into smaller timber, it's a good idea to pre-drill a hole before screwing to prevent split in. It is important not to screw too tight as we do need it to move, though it should have a little resistance. 
Alternatively, if you only need to air your plants out a small amount, you can wedge your lid open with an old bit of timber or even a rock. The last step is to paint the outside with outdoor paint or decking oil. This step isn't 100% necessary, but it does protect the timber and makes the cold frame look much better. That's it. Now your cold frame is finished, place it in a position that gets as much of the midday sun as possible, then start filling it with all those fragile plants and seedlings to get ahead of the pack or prolong growth. You could even get adventurous and try something completely new, now you have your very own microclimate. I hope you enjoyed watching and hopefully learn a little bit more about cold frames. I encourage you all to get the tools out and give it a go yourselves. Happy gardening. Well done, you've made it to the end of the video. Now, if you wanna learn even more about gardening, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here or watch more gardening tips just here.